Hi, I'm Fred Lawler. I'm a Linux engineer at Cloudflare. Today, I'll, pre I'll be presenting on securing systems with eBPF Linux security module. I'm working under the assumption that those attending this conference are familiar with eBPF. So this presentation is more, going, is more focused on LSM aspects since we may not be as familiar with that. So Linux security modules is a hook-based framework for implementing security policies and mandatory access control in the Linux kernel. Traditionally, LSMs are written as kernel modules, but now we can write them as eBPF without the need to compile a module. So first we'll look into some available options for observability and security detection. Where to find and read LSM documentation, since that can be a bit confusing to locate these. Then we'll look into a use case where we deny unprivileged user namespace creation with the flexible LSM. And finally, we'll look at the performance of this LSM. So let's briefly cover our options. So when working with security, we want to disrupt control flow. Probes and trace points are fine for debugging or alerting on suspicious activity, but can be susceptible to time of check, time of use attacks. In other words, attackers can trick reporting. Um, LSMs can still be vulnerable to these, but not as vulnerable. At that point, attacker is just trying to bypass control flow. Now with trace points, you can alter control flow, not sorry, not trace points, with probes, you can alter control flow a little bit, um, but you need a specific option enabled to uh, mutate the return value of these. However, it's not as effective as an LSM because LSMs are actually baked into call paths, uh, whereas probes, you're just working with the actual returns um, instead. So let's talk a little bit about the documentation. Um, it's kind of spread all over the place. Um, there's not much in the actual kernel documents for LSMs. So really you kind of have to read the source code uh, to be able to work with these. So let's start with uh, LSM hooks.h. Um, this file contains all documentation and description of available hooks. Um, they're essentially organized by categories, binary execution, tasks, sockets, etc. And it's not always up to date because sometimes documentation is overlooked uh, when people contribute to the kernel and, and update the source. Next one, LSM hook defs h, is, contains the full parameters to the hooks. Um, and their order, um, as well as the full list of registered hooks uh, within the uh, LSM system. So it's always a good idea to look at this file after identifying a possible hook, just to verify that your parameters uh, of what you expect and what you're passing in are uh, entirely correct. Then we have uh, security.h. Uh, security functions often call LSM hooks. So this is one of the confusing things about LSMs is that the hook names don't necessarily match the caller's name. Uh, definitions of these can be found in uh, security slash security.c. And that's a good file to cross-reference hooks against. When looking for LSM call paths, it's also a good idea to kind of search for security underscore um, whatever name or just arbitrarily uh, look for some wildcard. Um, so that way you can actually identify all the places where uh, these security hooks are called. So now that we're a little bit familiar with LSMs, um, let's talk about a uh, real world application of these. So a problem that Cloudflare has and a lot of other people have is uh, username space uh, creation um, in an unprivileged uh, environment. Um, this, this is often used as a first step in, in an attack uh, against systems because uh, the Linux kernel is not inherently uh, secure and there is bugs. And often is the case when exploits are performed, the first thing the uh, exploiters will do is they'll try to create a new user namespace. And the problem is in between patching the actual problems with the kernel and these attacks, there's, there's, there's a gap. So having, so having the ability to mitigate this, it might be very uh, pertinent to your your systems. So let's have a look at how that might look. So when we perform a clone new user, uh, we can use the unshare hyphen ru command to do so. Uh, but first, you know, let's look at our actual control flow here. Uh, we have ID, which as you'd expect, returns my current user group, etc. And if we perform the actual unshare hyphen ru and we perform ID again, we can see that we're now root. Um, this is not entirely true. Uh, if we look at the uh, proc self UID map, what we're actually seeing here is we're mapping root permissions to my user. Um, so this essentially allows us to 
work with kernel functionality that's backed behind a capsis admin. Now, in most circumstances, this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly intended. Uh, we don't actually have full root permissions such that we can't mutate files that are owned by root in, in the root file system. But we do have access, this shell now has access to uh, kernel features that we otherwise wouldn't have uh, with our own user. So let's track down the hook candidate. So for the sake of this presentation, I already know that create user NS is the function that we're trying to target. Um, for your use cases, you're going to have to probably dig through the kernel code um, because you have to really identify what you want to protect against and then know where to find that so you can protect against that. Um, and when you do have that function that you're looking for, you can easily open up uh, GDB, uh, perform a backtrace um, on, the, on the function that you're looking for, and you can kind of get, get a feel for the call path of where you might be able to find security functions. In our case, if we look at the... Uh, number two spot in, uh, let's see, where, where, it's, where we have a call from uh, ksys unshare, um, we can see that that function is located in kernel fork.c. Now we know that because this is um, located in that file, we can kind of infer that what we might be looking for is a task-based security hook. And we can kind of cross-reference that with our hook uh, documentation uh, based off those categories, and we can kind of find our the uh, what we can kind of find hooks that we're looking for within there. So let's actually take a look at the uh, kernel slash user underscore namespace dot c file. Uh, we can see that we have a call to uh, cred equal prepare creds, and then after that, then we make our call to create user ns. Now, since we're kind of looking for a guard. We can kind of uh, look at functions surrounding our actual creation here and kind of see if those actually have a security uh, call within them. Now, I know that prepare creds does. So when we take a look at that, we can cross-reference that with our actual uh, security hook, or not security, our LSM hook, and we can kind of see that we do have a case where we have a cred prepare here that we can hook into and block our actual call to uh, create a uh, user namespace. Um, this actually exists in the security hooks for task operations section of that file. So let's look at a BPF program. Now that we actually have the hook, we can actually create our uh, BPF program to stop this call path. So BPF programs, in the, in, at least in the LSM case, they're executed sequentially. So we start off with the uh, ret return ret, if ret return ret, because uh, it's basically an all or nothing uh, situation for whether or not this is gonna pass the security or not. Uh, but C groups is gonna change that um, in the future. There's, uh, there's more to come for that. Um, but for right now, uh, we're sticking with uh, a basic uh, implementation here. Um, and you'll see that we uh, first grab the task then we grab the uh, syscall that we're trying to target. Now, cred prepare is called in many places. So we really need to pin down the exact location that we want to prevent. And in this case, it's the unshared syscall. But clone and clone three are also, uh, also can also create new username spaces with the uh, clone new user flag. And once we have the syscall, then we can check for the actual flags for the syscall. Um, in this case, uh, clone new user. And if we don't have that, then go ahead and pass through because we don't care for the other cases with this, uh, with this security hook. But if we do have it, then we want to check to make sure like, hey, look, you know, this user is admin, so they should already be allowed to uh, perform this uh, functionality. Whereas if you're not, then go ahead and uh, disable this. And we do that with the uh, negative EPERM at the, at the end. Now, when we actually run this program and call unshare-ru, uh, we get our error code now uh, because we are now effectively blocked from uh, being allowed to make this call. Um, one thing to note, uh, the cannot allocate memory error message is uh, does not match with what we're returning. Now, we can look through the source code and easily see that whenever we block this particular uh, security uh, prepare creds call, 
that it always assumes that no memory was allocated. So we always get this error back. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Otherwise, if we go ahead and run this as root, then as you expect, our namespace is created and we are now mapped to root in this case. So let's talk about some of the problems with uh, CREP repair uh, for this LSM. It's uh, called in too many places. Uh, all the syscalls, clone, clone three, and unshare uh, need to be matched against registers. Uh, clone flags also have to be pulled from the registers and uh, it complicates portability. Um, so in our cases, we're working with x86-64, but if we were to port this over to ARM, uh, we would need ARM specific uh, magic numbers, et cetera, uh, to, to check against. So, to overcome these problems, we introduced a new hook called user ns create hook. And, to, and uh, with a corresponding security create user ns uh, function. So it really overcomes a lot of these problems, really trivializes our application uh, for this case, uh, because we don't need to perform those extra checks. And we already know that once we're in the create user ns function that the proper clone flags and creds and everything else have already been appropriately taken care of for us. So we can check to make sure that we are, um, so, so all we need to do is just check to see if we have capsis admin at this point. Uh, one thing to note that when submitting upstream, um, make sure to really define your case and how your new hook uh, solves this problem. Um, so that way you can really minimize your pushback from uh, maintainers. And um, for those who have been following recent news uh, regarding hooks, um, especially with IO Uring, it's always, uh, it's always uh, appropriate to really think about when implementing new features to include uh, LSMs. Uh, with with those new features um, right out from the get-go. So that way it's always easier to make sure that these get in there before the feature is actually released as opposed to after the fact. But let's look at performance. So we'll use ftrace for this. Since we're working with the syscall, ftrace is a good tool to leverage. Uh, we'll measure with cycles because seconds don't provide a high enough resolution for this uh, small syscall. So we're really going to perform two cases. A control case where we just perform the unshare without the LSM running, and then the second one with the LSM running. Now we only want to measure this as root because we already know that if we're not root, we're already going to get a really reduced, um, it's already going to be really reduced in terms of cycles used because we're blocking the whole context of fork at that point or clone or unshare, et cetera. Um, so we really only, only really care about the performance in the, in the root case. So if you have a lot of programs as root who are creating uh, new user namespaces, this is what we're looking at. So here are the results. Pretty, uh, not really all that self-explanatory, um, but we're looking at the uh, cycle counts here. So when we look at the actual uh, cycles with the uh, policy applied, we have 70,138. Uh, with our control, uh, this is without the LSM enabled, we have 63,294 cycles, and then we have a 6,844 uh, cycle difference. So our hook in the uh, case of root user uh, increase, uh, has a, a, roughly a 10% uh, performance impact, uh, which is actually not entirely too bad, um, to be quite honest. Um, you have to think that when we're creating user namespaces, uh, that, that's usually once per application, if that. Um, now, in our case of, pre of uh, prepare cred, uh, the problem is, is that's called in multiple places. So anytime that's actually called, um, you know, we get this 10% uh, performance um, impact, especially if callers are root. Um, but, you know, with the new user hook, uh, this won't be as prevalent um, in, the, uh, in your actual call pass. So, um, you know, Thank you for attending. Um, happy security. 